Hello, everybody, and welcome back for some weekly VR news, where I break down everything amazing that transpired last week, prepare you for this week's new releases, and then focus in on one major story. Today, we're going over the leaked specs for the upcoming Quest 3. We have the coolest gun stock I have ever seen. There's a handful of new hardware and game releases coming soon, and we're all still recovering from Bone Lab fever. Now, there are, of course, links and timestamps to everything I'll be discussing. But before we jump in, this video is brought to you by me. That's right, I'm sponsoring myself today. I recently moved into full-time content creation and that wouldn't be possible without some of my sponsors or you guys the absolutely amazing viewers if you want to help support the channel all you need to do is drop a thumbs up or maybe leave a comment or if you have some money to burn there is a link to my merch store and even my patreon page okay so let's start this video off by jumping right into bone lab fever the hype train on this title was absolutely insane to the point where leaked footage was starting to show up online content creators were a bit more eager than normal to start discussing this game and ultimately it caused a lot of content controversy as many people either love it or hate it now it's very easy for me to understand both opinions I'll have a follow-up video later this week discussing more of the reasons why Bone Lab might not be right for you, but may spawn a slew of amazing new content in the near future. Now, speaking of new content, something that was missed last week during all of that Bone Lab craziness was the new DLC for Walkabout Mini Golf. The new Jules Verne-inspired 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea DLC is now available. I think we could all agree this is the first time that a full course of Mini Golf has been played in a submarine. And I just absolutely love the creativity of these developers. We can all agree that mini golf isn't a high intensity sport, but they routinely manage to keep it exciting and captivating. Walkabout mini golf has managed to make itself this oddly, always enjoyable, very chill experience that you could jump into at any time with a bunch of friends. It's obvious to see how it's so successful and why they keep pumping out more DLC. Now, if that's not enough action for you, the high-speed futuristic motorcycle shooter Runner is dropping this week. This appears to be an on-rail shooter, which I know some of you may shrug at, but I'm a sucker for high-intensity action, and if they manage to sneak in some extra features like a cool storyline and maybe some epic boss fights, this can end up being a nice little distraction. Now, I'm not positive if I'll be covering this game or not, but if you are interested in seeing a review from me, let me know down in the comments. Now, unfortunately, that is my entire list of new releases I have scheduled for this week, but I'm sure most people will be glued to Bone Lab for at least another week or so. Now, surprisingly, the rest of this video is all about new VR technology, and a lot of it looks extremely exciting. First up is the HIG VR, which is the craziest gun stock I have ever seen, and it's much more than your typical arm stabilizing device. The HIG VR is an M4 carbine replica, which has a built-in controller, haptic feedback for recoil, and is fully adjustable. Now, the most impressive feature here is that built-in controller grip. I took one look at this gun stock and said, how the heck would that even work? You end up slapping the right-hand controller to the top of the gun, and that obviously wouldn't work in-game. However, they have built-in software that automatically compensates the controller offset and relocates the controls to the grip of the gun. This is an excellent design that overcomes some of the issues with modern gun stocks, but it's also more complicated and requires a software solution, so we may run into compatibility issues. The HIG VR is currently on Kickstarter with 10 days left, but they've already smashed through their goal, and there's currently still some early bird options available, starting at $204. Now, I've never been the biggest fan of VR gun stocks, but I feel like this one could change my mind or get me arrested if I carry one of these outside of my house. Now, it looks like yet another standalone VR headset has popped up before we get the release of the Quest Pro. Lenovo recently unveiled the Think Reality VRX, which is a new standalone headset with all the capability we'd come to expect, those new pancake optics, and color pass-through AR. The other major specs are yet to be revealed, but what interests me most here is the fact that everyone is so quick to adopt new technology, specifically those pancake lenses, and it's starting to look like everyone else is capitalizing on Meta's research. This really doesn't bode well for Meta if they're out there spending tens of billions resolving all the major issues around VR, and then other companies like Lenovo and Pico can just swoop in and even release products with the same technology faster than Meta. This is probably a topic for another full-on discussion. Also, the fact that everyone has now included color AR pass-through. So I'm really wondering if we'll see that feature utilized a lot more in the near future. And a perfect example of that may be the new tease that Mark Zuckerberg gave us for the Quest Pro. We got 52 seconds of a fencing demo, which seamlessly combines VR avatars with real life environments. If you're wondering why the Quest Pro is blurred out, so am I. It's possible they're using prototype devices that don't match the release version. Maybe there's a hidden feature that they have to obscure, or maybe they do just have penises on their heads. I'm not exactly sure. Google didn't have an answer for me either, and when I typed in that question, things started to get weird. Joking aside, I'm really pumped for this technology. 
I'm not sold yet, but a true AR experience is something I've wanted for an extremely long time. And I'm sure Meta will do their best to produce content that showcases this device as good as possible. But a more immediate piece of technology that solves a very specific issue has finally officially announced. I previously spoke about VR's D-Link AirBridge, which is a USB device that creates a dedicated Wi-Fi signal between your PC and your Quest 2. So if you want to do wireless PC VR gaming, but you have an old fashioned router and don't want to update it, or there's a ton of Wi-Fi interference in your house and both AirLink or virtual desktop just run like crap. Well, in that case, the VR bridge should be your solution. It's designed specifically for the Quest 2. And with D-Link working directly with Meta, this device is supposed to produce the lowest latency possible. Now, the whole working in conjunction with Meta actually doesn't give me much confidence because historically, virtual desktop performs much better for me compared to AirLink. Every other update seems to completely destroy my AirLink connection, while virtual desktop remains rock solid. Now, I'm also really curious why Meta is producing this hardware now. They've clearly abandoned the PC VR market. Their focus is entirely on standalone, and I'm just over here scratching my head. Is this more like an Apple approach where they realize the true money is in selling accessories? Or do they plan to use this technology for data collection so they could eventually build a cloud gaming service? I've spoken many times on this channel how I am not confident in a VR cloud-based gaming service because we can't even pull it off for flat screen games yet, and their dependency on latency is much lower. A laggy flat screen game might feel frustrating, but won't cause the user to start throwing up. Now, I do have a D-Link VR AirBridge on the way, so I will be doing testing in the near future. So if you have any specific questions about this product, let me know them down in the comments so I make sure to answer them in the future. Okay, so today's big story is the Quest 3 leak, and sadly, it's Bradley has done it yet again. I mean, come on, man, let us have some fun. Stop leaking everything. Now, if you want a much more technical overview, I will link his video down in the description, but here I'll give you more of the layman specs and my overall opinion on what I'm excited for and what disappointed me. Now, it's way too early for information like release dates and pricing, but we do know the Quest 3 will feature those pancake lenses that will severely slim down the device. There's now full color pass through, a new depth sensor, a charging port that appears to be compatible with the Quest Pro charger. So rather than fiddling around with a cable, you basically just lay it down on a surface. It looks like it will support those new Quest Pro controllers. So that may introduce some new features like full body tracking in the future. There's an IPD adjustment knob. So hopefully we can expect more than just three positions. And it's getting a brand new XR2 Gen 2 chip. Now I'll discuss that a bit more in a moment, but first I wanna mention what it doesn't have. The battery pack is still in the front of this device, making it more front heavy than other devices like the Pico 4. There's no eye tracking, so we won't be getting that eye tracked foveated rendering boost that we were hoping for. And it still has that frustratingly annoying default bungee strap that basically everyone upgrades. Now that's most likely a strategic move from Meta to one, help keep the cost down and also sell more accessories. You can also argue the fact that you like modular better. Having the option to change the strap to any third party strap is a pretty cool bonus. It just might make the device a little bit less cost effective compared to something like the Pico 4. Now I'm glad the headset is slimming down, so I'm sure we'll see an increase in comfort. While there's no specs on the panels just yet, I assume they'll be near 4K with possibly up to 120 Hertz. But what truly matters above all else is that new XR2 Gen 2 chip. Now the naming convention is actually a put off. When you say XR2 Gen 2, it doesn't seem like a true upgrade. It sounds like an RTX 3080 versus an RTX 30 Ti. Sure, the Ti or TIE edition is faster, but is it really faster? What will be the overall impact to my games? Can I run them at higher resolutions? Because the vast majority of Quest 2 titles do not run at the headset's native 2K resolution. So who cares if there's 4K panels in there? At minimum, we could expect less frame drops, maybe faster refresh rate, but that's not a true generational upgrade. I'm really hoping the XR2 Gen 2 is significantly more capable while remaining as thermally and energy efficient. That's always the magic balancing act that a mobile headset has to deal with. It doesn't matter if you have 8K visuals, if the headset only lasts 15 minutes or feels like a flamethrower on your face. So I'm really hoping that the Gen 2 delivers and the Quest 3 launches with exciting new cutting edge VR titles. But then again, if it is significantly faster and we start designing games for it, well, then the Quest 2 will go the route of the Quest 1 within another year. There's a lot of moving parts to all the changes going on in the VR industry right now. I can definitely keep talking for another 10 minutes, but this is where we're going to call today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, I will see you guys on next time.